also observed 18 mpg for the big cat versus the Levant's 15 mpg. But this Italian's most likely analog is the stoic Porsche KN, which in GTS trim also offers standard air springs, all-wheel drive, and a turbocharged V6. At 118.3 inches, the Levant's wheelbase is 4.3 inches longer than the KN's, giving it roomy front and rear berths. If being special in an Italian sort of way is to be Maserati's defining trait, then it has largely succeeded inside the Levant. Its interior is embellished where the KN's is antiseptic. It's emotive where the KN is restrained. And it's just damned nice where, well, the KN is nice. The aroma of leather permeates the cockpit, and its supple organic texture covers most every surface, including the dash and doors. The brown hides in our Levant were accented with stunning white stitching, front and rear. Open pore wood trim inserts complement the brushed aluminum elements that form the sculpted door handles. Luciano Pavarotti, were he still belting it out at the Tetro alla Scala, would be at peace here for the commute home. The moment killer happens, however, with the observation that much of the Levant's switchgear is shared with relatively cut-rate Fiat Chrysler products. View 28 Photos The FCA influence is a mixed blessing. Maserati, left to its own devices, might have given us only stunning beauty in lieu of function. FCA, which brings economies of scale, had other ideas. The high-resolution infotainment screen, at 8.4 inches, looks great and is big enough to be genuinely practical. The system operates with a competent familiarity and best in the business speed, and it now has a console-mounted dual-knob interface improving its usability. It did, however, freeze twice during our time with the Levant, locking its driver out of audio and ventilation controls. On both occasions, the system had to sit overnight to regain its wits.